Yo guys, what is up? Moxie here in our Wonderlands video and today we're going over things in Wonderlands that I wish I knew before I started my playthrough. This video will be going over gear recommendations for things that like you shouldn't miss out on or things that I wouldn't want you to miss in your playthrough, an explanation of loot luck, things I wish I knew before I started re-rolling enchants, and so much more. I hope you guys find the video informative. Just a heads up, I will be showing pieces of gear uh, in this video, so if you're looking for absolutely zero gear spoilers, I would clip, click away, uh, but just letting y'all know, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you find it informative, and let's get right into it. Coming in our number one spot are purples you should not miss. Now, there are a lot of new items into this game, but one of the absolute best new additions is these new purple cryo SMGs. They act like Santox. They're basically uh, Santox. They fire this wave of bullets, and they're some of the strongest weapons in the game, but they're super specific. It has to be either Hyperion or Doll. It has to be multi-pellet, and it has to be cryo, and that's why these things are super rare to come upon, but when you can get one, they will just carry you. Um, they can only be cryo because if, for example, this came in fire or shock or poison, instead of doing this Sandhawk pattern where it fires all these like wave of bullets, it would actually be a laser beam. And the laser beam variant for the other elements is so much weaker. So cryo versions of these are the only ones that exist. There is no legendary variant. And these are things that you just like simply wouldn't want to ignore because of how strong they are. And uh, it's one of my best tips for if you're trying to get into the game and you're struggling with some bosses, keep an eye out for one of these things because they're really good. The other purple I would keep an eye out for is the Cloudburst Arc Torrent. You're looking for channel casting on this, which will add damage, and also the line that says calls down a lightning bolt. If you ask me, hey Moxie, what's the highest damage dealing spell or what spell deals the most damage, I'd probably tell you this thing. Uh, this is kind of not quite as rare, but feels kind of like getting a cloning maddening tracker in Borderlands 3. You need it to be literally all of these things, but if you can get all of these things, a Cloudburst Arc Torrent with Channel Cast and will Call Down Lightning, it will be one of the strongest spells that you acquire during your playthrough. And so I just wanted to call it out so you guys can keep an eye out for it. Next up, I'd like you to understand Loot Luck. Now, Loot Luck is a complex kind of thing in Wonderlands, but basically, the more Loot Luck you have, the better your chances of getting dedicated drops from bosses are, and your better chance of getting legendaries when you do Chaos Chambers or when you kill a boss. So, the way that you increase your Loot Luck is by leveling up, by collecting golden dice around the maps, by collecting all four pieces of the Loot Luck Shrine, by getting an amulet that increases your Loot Luck, by getting a shield that increases your Loot Luck, or by leveling up in your Chaos or Myth rank. Now, all this means is, as you're going to play the game, your loot luck is going to increase. But I encourage you, when you're playing through the game, if you're exploring through the maps, or if you're running through things, to take a second to look around. It's going to be a lot more difficult to come back and grab dice than it is when you're first running through areas to grab the dice. If you just take a peek around a corner, I'm sure you'll find some, and it'll increase your chance of getting legendaries later on. It's something that I really wish I had paid more attention to in my run through, because now I find myself going back to the very beginning of the maps to go get more dice so I get more rewards at endgame. It's an interesting system, and I want you guys to understand it. And that leads me into my next thing. Once you get into Anoints, I strongly recommend getting a shield with the Anoint gain plus 25 percent loot luck if i am farming something i will have this shield on it's not specific to this shield uh, but there is an enchant to gain 25 percent and increase loot luck and it's just kind of active so i equipped this shield with the plus 25 loot luck and i also equipped a talisman or amulet with plus 17.5 percent loot luck just things that you can quickly swap to before you complete an area or a dungeon or kill a boss and now I went from 7,000 loot luck to 11,000. So if you're looking at farming something extensively, obviously if you're just running through the game, you don't need to do this, but if you're planning on spending an hour farming for an item, it just makes sense to equip those things before you spend a lot of time doing it. Next up, you should know about how enchant rerolling works because there is a big danger to rolling enchants on gear. So when you roll an enchant on a piece of gear, every time you do it, it goes up. Um, and it doubles. So like if I roll this uh, weapon right here, if I re-roll it, uh, I don't want ability damage, so I'm going to discard. I go back, now it's 32, and it keeps going up. Here's the problem though, is you only get a max of 4,000 moon orbs, and you reach that max of 4,000 moon orbs in 11 re-rolls. So for example, I have this chaotic blazing volley of screams that I can no longer re-roll enchants on 
and I didn't realize that it was increasing by so much, and I never put an enchant on it. So now this weapon is never capable of getting an enchant on it because I will never have more than 4,000 moon orbs unless they change the cap. Um, and this is something that I've did to a few of my weapons where I now have pieces of gear that I can just never reroll enchants on or add new enchants to because I basically bricked the weapon by rerolling it too many times. Now, I do think this is something Gearbox should fix. I do think there should be a cap or a max amount of moon orbs that it could be spend on that isn't infinitely increasing but the way that it is now the way that the game is at launch you're going to want to be very very careful with what you roll when you're rolling in chance and you get the chance so like for example if i re-roll this thing this fragment reign of the wizard um after reloading gain companion critical chance i actually like that so i can take that or i can discard it and keep my original uh, which is a really nice system but you're gonna want to be very careful when you're doing this because it is possible to end up with a anoint that you don't like and not being able to change it and that is something that you should be very careful of up next and following up on things i wish i knew is the progress bar when you're in the fast travel map uh you can see the things to fast travel too but you can also check your progress this is a great way to check how many lucky dice you're missing, how many poetry pages you're missing, how many rune switches you're missing, and so on and so forth. If you're trying to 100% the game and get all the things done, going over to the progress area is something that is super helpful and just a small little tip to keep in mind. Next up are how class mods work. Now, class mods can be equipped regardless of what class mod they are for. So, for example, this is like a Berserker class mod, but I can still equip it. Now, the Berserker skills on this class mod I will not get because I'm currently not spec'd into the Berserker tree. I'm a Spellshot Graveborn. However, even though I am not spec'd all the way down to this Blast Gasp skill... This class mod does have Blast Gasp on it, so I will be getting points into the Blast Gasp skill. So if I cast this spell with that ability on, you will see it doing Blast Gasp. That is those, like, kind of Novas. If I take that class mod off now and I cast the spell again, you will no longer see those Novas, hence proving that um, your class or your class mod can boost skills that you have not specced into but it only works for skills that are available in your skill tree you can't get berserker points by equipping a berserker class mod if you're not a berserker next up and this is just a small little thing but your class mod actually determines your appearance so right now i have a berserker class mod on and my character is going to look like a berserker you can change your like armor color and the patterns that are on your armor but how you actually look is determined by your class mod so if you find a really cool class mod that you like the look of you can hold on to it even if the stats aren't that great um that way you can save multiple looks but as you can see when i change my actual armor i completely change the way that my character looks that was a stabomancer main now i can change to a graveborn main class and i will look completely different than when i did when i was wearing the berserker or the stabomancer Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace. I was putting